Bulavinaka and welcome once again to our series of training videos on nurseries. In the first video, we looked at the advantages of using vegetable seedlings from a nursery versus direct seeded and transplanting bare rooted plants. In this video, we're going to focus on the basics of building a nursery, including what the nursery should provide, some types of nursery structures, their cost, and also some building tips. Nurseries can come in many different shapes and sizes, depending on the crop being grown and the number of seedlings being produced. A nursery for growing vegetable seedlings should provide a few basic things. Firstly, it should separate the plants from the ground. The soil contains many diseases that can be harmful to young vegetable seedlings. Secondly, it should protect the plants from heavy rain. Heavy rain can wash away newly sown seeds and damage young seedlings. Too much rain will also encourage disease and kill young seedlings. Thirdly, it should protect the plant from heat and the intense sun by providing shade. This is not necessary for all vegetable seedlings and may vary throughout the year. It is important to choose the type of nursery that suits your needs. If you are a village or backyard vegetable farmer, then you do not need to spend much money to build a nursery that can produce small numbers of seedlings. If you have a semi-commercial or commercial farm and would like to grow your own seedlings, then you may need to invest in a nursery that can produce enough seedlings for your farm all year round. Finally, if you want to supply large amounts of seedlings to a big farm or you want to set up a commercial nursery to sell your seedlings, then you may need to build a much more sophisticated nursery. Remember, a smart farmer builds a nursery that is adaptable and meets his current needs but also has room to expand. Now we're going to look at three different types of nursery structures and give you an indication of how much they may cost to build. These are just examples and the cost will vary depending on the materials you use and where you buy them from. This nursery is designed to utilize local materials that can be collected at little or no cost. The nursery is approximately 4 meters by 2 meters and can hold around 20 seedling trays at a time. This nursery is made with materials that will last longer than the backyard nursery, but it does not require the construction of a shade house. This nursery is 2.5 meters by 1.2 meters and can hold around 20 trays of seedlings. This nursery design is a more typical shade house, which is 6 meters by 6 meters and holds 12 benches. Each bench holds 20 trays. The nursery has a total capacity of 240 trays at any given time. Whether you're building a backyard nursery or a large commercial nursery, the first and most important step is choosing a site. When selecting a site, you must consider the following. One, you will need good sunlight. Two, 
Choosing a site with a good airflow is important. This helps with the control of disease. 3. A good water source close by. Seedlings need to be watered daily. 4. A flood-free area. And finally, a secure site free from animals and thieves. Having the nursery close to the house is advisable. You also need to be mindful of pest host plants near your site. Plants such as guava and banana attract bad insects if these plants are near your nursery and you will have problems with these insects. Now we're going to show you a few tips and tricks about building nurseries in Fiji. Shade cloth. Shade cloth is used to filter the sunlight for young plants. Generally, 50% shade is used for growing vegetable seedlings in the Western Division and the Matawata and Bua provinces, where there is an abundance of sunshine. In areas such as the Central Division, Savsavu and Teviuni, where there is more cloud, rain and less sunlight hours, then 30% shade is preferred. Either green or black shade cloth may be used. There are many stores in Fiji that sell shade cloth, but be careful about the very cheap ones as they may not have good protection from the sun and will not last long. Ultraviolet protected rope or UV rope. The best material for sewing your shade cloth is UV rope. This rope has good protection from the sun and will last a very long time. UV rope is available from hardware stores in Fiji. Clear plastic. Clear plastic is used to keep the rain off your seedlings. This is a very important material in the rainy season. It is critical that you get a thick, high quality plastic so that it can withstand the sun, wind and rain. The thickness of plastic is measured in microns. It is recommended that plastic greater than 100 microns be used for your nursery. Seedling benches. One good way to make benches for your nursery is to use sheets of mesh wire. These sheets of mesh wire are 8 feet long by 4 feet wide and the square holes are 2 inches by 2 inches. These mesh wire sheets are available for most hardware stores and will last a long time in the nursery. These mesh wire sheets can also be modified to be stronger and hold up hoops, like in the small farm nursery, if an angle line frame is welded onto the mesh wire. It is important that your shade cloth be sewn together properly in order to withstand strong wind and rain. Sewing shade cloth is much like sewing clothes. A needle can be made by using a piece of number 8 wire. One end should be sharpened and the other end flattened with a hole to attach the UV rope. Nursery frame. The frame of a nursery is needed only to support the shade cloth or plastic. The most effective and economical way to build a nursery frame in Fiji is to use pine poles and wires. A wooden frame design, like that used in building a house, is much more expensive and requires more maintenance than the wire design. Other support ideas include steel post, cement filled PVC pipe and bush timber. So now you've seen what's involved in constructing a nursery, including selecting your site, choosing the type of nursery, some tips and tricks the different materials. Now all that's left is to go out and build it. All the best.